Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of Sarastaro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Trandoshan Hunters from Fantasy Flight's Imperial Assault. With their rich green skin, deep orange eyes, and predatory stance, the Trandoshan Hunters are some of the most visually interesting miniatures in the game. Being mercenaries, the Trandoshans don't have a formal uniform like the Imperials, which means we can enjoy greater freedom when choosing the colours to paint them. Although here I've used the same blue-grey tones that I used for the Imperials that we covered in episode 5. In this video we will paint two miniatures. For one, we'll use colours based on the best known Trandoshan from the movies, Bosk, which is how I'll be referring to the figure for the purposes of this tutorial. And for the other, we'll be trying out a simple camouflage design. Although this video aims to introduce some useful ideas, I would strongly encourage an experimental approach and for you to try out some original colour schemes and variations of your own. With that said, here are the main steps. We'll prepare and prime the miniatures in the usual way, ideally with a white primer. We'll then carefully apply the base colours, starting with the clothes and finishing with the skin. Next we'll add shadows and highlights which will include the use of washes to produce some pleasing variations of skin tone. We'll finish the miniatures by adding some final details to the eyes, and giving our Trandoshans a decent amount of weathering. Let's begin. After removing the mould lines, a white spray would be the best choice for priming the hunters, as we'll be using mostly quite bright colours, including some white. You may of course use a black or grey primer, but may have to work a little harder to achieve the bright finished tones we're after. We now paint the base colours. It makes sense to begin with the areas that are difficult to reach, or hard to paint neatly, so that we can tidy up any scrappiness when we add the subsequent colours. I'm going to begin with the dark trim of the outfit, and we'll be using a 50-50 mix of black and Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm going to use the same tone for the backpack, but you could of course pick your own colour here, like brown perhaps. For Bosk, I'll be using some Mephiston Red for the neck piece. And some Steel Legion Drab for the belt, which is a colour we'll be using a fair bit of later on. Now we paint the main part of the outfit. For Bosk, we'll use plain Ogren camo. Whilst painting the suit, we want to carefully neaten any scrappy edges left over from the previous colours, and two thin layers will be needed for a reasonably solid finish. Source material indicates that there's a dark underlay beneath Bosk's white flak jacket, which I'm going to paint with Mechanicus Standard Grey. For our second hunter, we're going to begin by using some white to neaten up the edges of the grey. We're then going to create a simple three-tone urban camouflage pattern using white, Celestra grey and Mechanicus standard grey. You could of course use any colours you like however. Here I've used white with some dark reaper and storm vermin fur for example. Since we already have the white, we just need to add the grey parts of the design beginning with Celestra Grey. A quick search online for camouflage should give you plenty of ideas as to the kind of pattern you may like. Notice I'm leaving enough white space to add my darker grey tone afterwards. And now we apply the Mechanicus Standard Grey. 
guns can now also be given a base tone of Mechanicus Standard Grey. With that done, we now paint the eyes, and I'm using Wild Rider Red. We don't need to worry about being too neat here, as it's the green skin tone that will provide the final clean edge. Before painting the skin, we're going to give the gun a dry brush with some lead belcher. That way, any areas of skin that we hit will be easily covered over when we add the green skin tone. Next we paint the skin, for which we will need around two layers of Castellan Green. The last areas in need of colour are the claws and the tongue. I'm giving my claws a base tone of Steel Legion Drab. For the tongue, you could use or mix pretty much any shade of pink you like. I'm using some Screamer Pink, which I'm going to lighten with a little white. With the base colours finished, we're ready for the shading and highlights. We're now going to work section by section, adding shadow and highlight as appropriate. We'll begin by shading the yellow suit with a dark wash, made of a 50-50 mix of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade. We can also apply this same mix to the claws, and even the tongue. For all of the grey areas, including the gun, we're going to apply some straight Nuln Oil. We'll also use this to shade the white flak jacket. For our second hunter, we can apply plain Nuln Oil to the clothing as well as the bag and other grey areas. However, we want to either avoid the areas we want to remain highlighted, or, as I'm doing, gently wipe the wash away from those areas, which would be places like the tops of the shoulders, backside and knees. This will allow us to avoid having to manually highlight these areas, which would be tricky to do with such an intricate pattern. The purpose of adding highlights and shading, of course, is to add contrast, which creates depth. With a heavily contrasting pattern, we may have to exaggerate the shading further than usual. To do that, we can add some additional layers of shade selectively just to the areas we want to darken. I'm using a thinned mix of 50-50 Nuln Oil and Lamian Medium, although water would also be fine, and I'm adding up to three layers to strengthen the shadows. We want to focus on the areas that would naturally be shadowed, such as under the arms, the inner leg areas, and just below the leg pouches. This is pretty easy to do, and by the time we've added our third layer, we should be able to see a lovely build-up of shade, giving us that contrast and depth we're looking for. 
For Bosk's outfit, we begin adding highlights in the usual way, starting with a thinned reapplication of Ogryn camo. We want to cover all of the main and raised areas with this, but leave the creases and shadowed areas alone. Don't forget to build up the paint in a couple of layers, ensuring that we achieve the strongest tone for the lightest parts, before we mix a brighter shade. For the next layer of highlight, we're going to use a roughly equal mix of Ogryn Camo and Flash Gits Yellow. We now want to highlight a smaller area within the areas we've already covered. If you followed the guides for the Imperial faction, you'll already know that this is the most time-consuming part of the process, but can also be quite meditative and rewarding. We then add a little more of the yellow along with some white. For the last couple of highlights, we can simply add some more white. I've saved the brightest highlights for the tops of the shoulders, the right elbow, knees and edges of the pouches. Although it's not essential, you could finish the outfit off with a yellow glaze to help tie the layers together. Next we'll highlight the black bag, straps and sleeve cuffs with a dark grey. I'm using Eshin grey, but you could also use Mechanicus standard grey. I'm going to add just one smaller highlight with some additional white mixed in to lighten the tone. For Bosk, we also need to paint the collar. I'm going to give it a careful highlight using some Evil Sun's Scarlet. Followed by a thin strip of Wild Rider Red. We could then give it a dark wash. I'm using Karaberg Crimson, but Nuln Oil might also be okay. With the clothes more or less finished, we can now paint the skin. We'll be highlighting the skin with two lighter shades of green, before using a wash to tint the skin, and give some definition to the scaly texture. Our first highlight will be with some Elysian Green. As usual, it's important to thin the paint so we don't kill the details. This layer will cover most of the skin, except for places like the small gaps between the toes. <laughs> 
When we get to the face, we can also carefully leave some dark creases around the eyes, which will help to make them a focal point and add expression. The Elysian Green will need a second layer, especially for the upturned areas that would catch the most light. Now we use some Ogryn camo for our second highlight. Here we can also pick out some of the individual scales, especially around the edge of our chosen area of highlight. We don't need to articulate every scale however, as the dark wash we'll be adding later will do that for us. I'm not concerned about being too neat with the feet and legs, as I'll be adding a fair bit of dirt to them in the final stage. Once again, we want to save the sharpest contrast for the eye area. And just as with the Elysian Green, we should ensure we've maxed out the strength of the highlight by adding a second or even third layer for the brightest raised areas. Now we apply a dark wash to the skin, to shade the recesses and give it a unifying tint. There are several shades we could use, and using different shades for individual hunters is a nice way to create some variety. If I had to pick just one however, I would probably use Athonian Camo Shade, and that's what I'll be using for Bosk. It's worth reminding ourselves that we need to give these shades a good long shake to get the best out of them. As usual, we apply the wash undiluted and ensure that it settles into all of the places we want darkened. Here we can see how nicely the shade helps to define the beautifully scaly texture of the skin. For our second hunter, I'm going to try out some Beale Tan Green. We can see straight away how much more vibrant this shade is compared to the more earthy tone of the Athonian Camo Shade. Depending on what kind of wash you used, you may like to reapply a few final highlights, to the face in particular, with some Ogryn Camo. We can also pick out a few scales whilst we're at it. This completes our painting of the skin. Now we'll use some Ushabti Bone to highlight the claws. And we can use the same colour to pick out a few teeth. The last bits of detail we need to paint are the strap and belt buckles. For that, we can carefully apply a little iron breaker which we can then dull with a small amount of non-oil. <laughs> 
Finally, we might add a little Agrax Earthshade to the claws. We're now ready to add some finishing touches. Let's now add some detail to the eyes. We'll begin by shading the eyes with some Fugan Orange, although a red shade, like Caraberg Crimson, would also be okay. We ideally want the wash to pool slightly around the rim of the eye, to subtly shade the edges, so it might be best to hold the hunter horizontally for a minute to let the shade dry a little. Now we use some plain black and our smallest brush to paint the pupils. We still thin the paint a little for these details, as it helps prevent the paint on the brush from drying too quickly. If things go wrong here, we can always reapply some Wild Rider Red to neaten things up, or to start again. One more touch we can add to the eyes is to add a tiny reflective glint with some pure white. This wants to go just to the side of the pupil and should be as small as possible. This is an entirely optional touch, but is one that can really help bring life to the eyes. We're now going to use some Steel Legion Drab to add a dried mud effect. An old brush would be good to use for this if you have one. We thin the paint a little, and in a semi-dry brush fashion, we simply stipple the paint onto the areas we want to weather. We want to concentrate mostly on the feet and leg areas, but can add bits of mud splatter as far up as we like. This is a good opportunity to obscure any bits of the miniature you might not be happy with. We should now reapply a few highlights to the muddied areas by adding some Ushabti bone, or even just some white, to the Steel Legion drab. We might also bring back a little depth by using some Agrax Earthshade to darken the creases and recesses. Now our hunters have a pleasingly well-travelled look we can go ahead and paint the base before spraying with our matte varnish. Finally, we might like to add some slightly thinned gloss varnish to the eyes. This completes our Trandashan Hunters. Thank you once again for watching, and for all of the likes, comments and subscriptions that are so helpful to me and for the growth of the channel. Join me again soon as we finish off the mercenary faction, before turning our attention to the heroes. Happy painting!